We are live and on time. Actually, precisely on time because as you may have survived, I don't start early. I don't start on time. I always start early. And if I'm starting on time, usually means I'm waiting for somebody. So we are waiting for the illustrious chat. So what we're going to do, happy Easter, by the way, everybody. We are going to do the sponsors, get this out of the way, because I usually rush through them at the end. But here we got our sponsors, ASL Consulting. That's me. If you have questions, go to assholeconsulting.com, where if, if you got money, I will give you my cappy love, which is in the form of me yelling and hating on you because you're probably fucking up. And it's not that you have a problem you don't know about. You usually have a problem. You know exactly what the problem is. You know exactly what the solution is. You just want someone to say, yeah, there's no other easy way, easy way out of it. So for confirmation, or you truly don't know, go to assholeconsulting.com. MGTOW's Guide to Retiring on $200,000 in Southeast Asia. You can get that at MGTOWbooks.com. Uh, speaking of books, I'm not going to plug my other ones that I normally do, except for the ones that are paid to. But I'm talking my, my own ones. Uh, get the best of books. If you're bored, you're looking for something to read, uh, get my uh, third book now, I think, Love Letters to the Left. This is just a backup of my uh, best blog posts. Uh, along with Captain Capitalism Top, uh, Top Shelf and Captain Capitalism Reserved, those you can all find on Amazon.com. They're not edited. It's just I copied and pasted all my best posts. Saves you a lot of time reading through, gosh, 4,000 posts now. And some of my best writing is my blog post. They don't always have to be lengthy, long uh, books like Bachelor Pad Economics. Uh, we have the Pence Principle. I got a copy of that here. I thought I did. Oh, here it is, hiding. Written by Randy Bentwick. Pence Principle short book right there. Uh, boys, while you have some downtime, please get this to make sure you are never me too You never make the mistake. Here's here's the sad thing about this. Every If, if we're going to use the new standard of, uh, what was this gal's name? Basie Bat Bailey, uh, the bitch that lied about Brett Kavanaugh. If that's the new standard... Every, every boy alive to every boy, every man alive today has done something in their past that could get them in trouble. So if you ever want to run for Senate or uh, <clears throat> whatever, someone will come up and uh, it's not even that you've done anything. Uh, it's more probably they'll just lie about you. Uh, and what you got to do, especially if you're a young man, is make sure you're a bulletproof against that. So there's some, it would seem draconian. <clears throat> And some extreme measures you would take. But, uh, man, if you're going to work four to six years in college to get a real degree, become a doctor or a surgeon, just takes one, guys. Just takes one. And this goes through, like, you know, body cams and webcams and consent forms and all that. A short one, but it's a good one. And then we also have Fitz Barrick's book, How Not to Become a Millennial, but uh, predominantly written by me. And then he bought it from me, made some changes, but it's still 90% cappy. Some interesting uh, items he changed, but um, damn good book. Get that as well. And then <clears throat> Adam Pinkett's book. You can go to his site at pushingrubberdownhill.com, and he has a book out by the same name, Pushing Rubber Downhill. Uh, so his podcast, his blog, and his book, all the same name, all good. Check it out. Uh, that book is a must-read. Is the you know is it the journey of a man, the path of a man, where he goes from this cuck. This pathetic, sad wimp that we all were back in the 90s and 80s. And he drove a motorcycle across Australia for his girlfriend, who ignored his phone calls. Who, uh, we got these two Hanyakers here. Uh, they ignored his phone calls. And, uh, then he, then he became a man 20 years later. And then The Science of Mastering Women, written by Linda Gross. You can find that on Amazon.com. Uh, she is a PhD in psychology and has done a bunch of research and numbering uh, to boil it down to a little bit more of an algorithmic scientific method on approaching women. And that's it for sponsors. What's up? We got the great one. And Chad, great one. Can you hear us all right? Yeah, I hear you. What's can happening, you, guys? Wait, I can't hear you. Are you talking can right you now? Can you hear me? Can you, can you hear me? me? No, can I can't you hear, hear me? You. Can you hear me? So everybody come back in 20 minutes. When come we back finish in 20 minutes. Can you hear me? Hey, Chad, can you hear me? Uh, hello. Chad, is anybody hello. There? Can you hear me? McFly? Chad. Hey, McFly? Chad Elkins. Okay. Good, to, good to see you. I actually talked to you, man. 
I feel like I know you from seeing you on the podcast so many times. Well, Claire is just the type that connects all of us. uh, He is. He is a nexus. (laughs) It's true. I, if it was up to me, I'd have like a thousand people on, but it just becomes a shit show when you get more than like three is almost oh, yeah. the max. You got to because you can't you can't do more than three because um, I, I wanted to invite the uh, the masculine geeks on. And I was like, like, ah, if you two come on, that's just going to be a zoo because I have they'll have six people running at the same time. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how you can handle that. But anyway, how's everyone's Easter? Good. I heard yeah. you had a good one. <laughs> yeah, I got to eat at my buddy Lloyd's place, and he made us uh, some great ham and homemade cheesecake oh, and yeah. Yukon, yeah, Yukon potatoes and bacon-wrapped asparagus. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. How about you, Great? When you make anything like that back at your home? Uh, no, no. I just cooked up uh, some sausage and some broccoli and some bell peppers and stuff like that. And right now, I'm just standing here enjoying the snow because it's snowing on Easter because bipolar colorado right. and global yeah, warming right we uh we're part of that same snowstorm we're getting about four inches today oh really yep yep so it's all it's snowy bad. outside and yesterday everyone had the motorcycles out and i went for uh cumulatively an eight mile walk uh two miles first and then six miles the next time but uh yeah i i, I even and i was thinking like ah, do i break my fun little convertible car out not yet nope and i'm glad i did it <laughs> not yet not yet. So we're doing a real quick Easter podcast, uh, just because we haven't done a, a Clary podcast in a while. And um, I've got, uh, I'm on the Twitter right now. Do you see this tweet put out by Rich Cooper? Is uh, he a Canadian? Yes, he's a Canadian. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't pay attention to Canadians. No. I, I typically don't either, <laughs> but uh, sometimes they tweet it out. Uh, but there's some guy offering a, a Corona pickup system. A PUA is offering. Oh, a, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> it's like forty nine bucks, right? Well, hang on here. Here's forty nine bucks for his Corona pickup s- system. The one time payment of forty nine forty seven, and then there's a menu. So the ten plus <laughs> Corona specific pickup training videos, one thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollars. Like, is this legit? This can't be possibly real. But the, uh, but then I think, well, Rich is pretty thorough. I just wish I knew who this person was. Uh, but then personalized worksheets, $997 texting flow charts, like texting, <laughs> like if she says this, then you spot a go here, spot B go yeah. there. Uh, oh man. Free call with me, John Anthony. Who's John Anthony? No okay, idea. John Anthony. I guess John Anthony is it to cover anything you like. My Twitter profile, the big brings me 30 plus matches a day, 390 uh, seven dollars one month free access to my mastermind ment- mentorship group on Facebook. Unannounced mm. super bonus. That that you know what the price of that is, guys? Oh, nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety seven cents. Wrong. It is priceless. And then oh, three, three bonuses for two hundred ninety seven. Total value five thousand thirty five dollars. Mm-hmm. I don't I, know how that. How did I, we arrive at that value? I think it just added up all the. The total because it's 2000, 1000, 1250, What I, I, is this legit? Is this real? Like, well, which part? Like meeting girls in the time of Wuhan? Here, here's the thing is, I, I knew, I know, I know you can meet girls in the time of Wuhan. Yes, it, they're out there. Uh, <laughs> but I remember, gosh, 15 years ago, a buddy of mine, this is before the internet, paid for physical class with print offs on how to get girls. This guy did pay around five grand for this. So it's possible that pricing has happened before, but this can't be real. Like a Corona pickup system. I think it's real. Well, I mean, I think it's real in the sense of like, I've been trying to figure out how does all of this weird social distancing and crap, like how does this work now? Like how do we use this? You know, how do you interpret it? Like I've been going out, I talked to some chick just yesterday and it's, so, you know, it's like, you've got the girls who are walking around with the mask on. And if you get too close to them, they run away. And then you've got the other girls that you walk up to them and they don't care about social distancing. It's uh-huh. like, how do you use all of this and read it and all this other horse poop? But I don't know that I'm going to pay $5,000 for someone <laughs> to tell me this, cause especially cause 
I don't know who this guy is and I have no evidence that he's ever less left his mom's basement in the last three years. Well, and, and in the three weeks we've had this crisis, did, did he go study under a Exactly, a monk to master right, this right, for right. the past eight years, and now I mean, what is how, how much note? how much field testing has this gone through? <laughs> right, I mean, you know, we got like Nick Krauser who's written books based on years and years of field testing. Mm -hmm. So, how much field testing has this guy done? Yeah, you're right. It's this has been around for three weeks. I, the field I, testing here is zero. I'll tell you how to do it for free. I think you've already heard me talking about that. What this. you you happen to be quarantined with two hot girls in your apartment, <laughs> that, <laughs> or you happen to be a you happen to be a CPA, and so women find you irresistible. It's, it's a mean, combination of both, actually. Yeah, um, that's what I figured. Are you laying but, down the wisdom there, POA Corona Chan God? <laughs> well, you've heard me. I, at least I think I've talked to you about this on the podcast. Like all you have to do is meet somebody, connect with them. You can't go anywhere or do anything with them yet. So you just right. get on here. You do basically do what we're doing, you know, with a drink and you just shoot the shit, laying the foundation for when you can finally go out and, you know, have fun with them. Yeah, or get stood up. I See, I would love to see all the relationships that are formed over the internet. When it, Here'd be a great statistic. When it comes time to actually meet the guy in the real world, what percent of the women flake? Exactly. And I, oh, it's going to be high because they're going to be 90 percentile. I yeah. hate to, I, I don't even mean to sound pessimistic or safe for effect, but I almost, I, I think uh, the great one's deadly accurate. It's going to be nine out of 10. They, they, you think it's going to be higher? See, well, I would go ahead. I mean, you can't be too much higher than nine out of 10, but I mean, yeah, it's going to be like 90 percentile, 90 percent at the minimum. Sure. It could be as minimum. high as 100 percent. See, I, my theory on it is at least they have nothing to do, so they'll just take whatever attention they can get. Right. And then when they're able to go out and, you know, attention whore on Instagram, you're not going to be part of that equation. Exactly. That's my theory. Right. You are, you are completely correct. <laughs> I, I how, hate to sound so dark, Macog, because normally I'm a very optimistic and on the bright side person. Boy, but, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, but that, <laughs> that dawned on me where it's like, yeah, when it comes time to actually meet these guys, and let's say you guys do meet, I, again, how many, now you're right, Chad, with Skype or any kind of FaceTime thing, you can actually see what they look like. There's no hiding that. They can't Helpful, like, yeah. Yeah. So there's, that's one big thing knocked out, but I guarantee you when you run into them, it's going to be some other flaw that, but I want to know this ratio. I bet you it's going to be one in 10 actually show up for the date. And then there'll be a panic excuse. We're like, <laughs> oh, I got to leave. Did that happen to you, Chad? Was that somebody else? I think you told me about somebody else who had that happen where suddenly there was an emergency or something or yeah, they showed up and she said she had to leave in 30 minutes because she had to make a bank deposit. <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> me. <but> okay. <laughs> she had it wasn't or, you, great one, was it? I no, don't think no. it was you. No, okay. No. All right. Last it girl was... I went out with, she had to leave because she got hit by a truck. Oh, Ooh. that one. Okay. No, you don't know that one, Chad? No. You've never <laughs> oh god. That's a clear great, classic. Great great one. Why do you explain to Chad she did not get hit by the truck? So he knows I'm not making this up. So as as far as I remember it, Aaron was telling the story about how some girl stood him up and he was talking to his mother about it. And so, of course, his mother says, Well, you don't really know what happened. Maybe she didn't mean to stand you up. Maybe she got hit by a truck. And that just that story just stuck with me, and that's always my thing with chicks. Is that yeah, well, you know, maybe she got hit by a truck because yeah. yeah, that could totally have happened. It yeah. was one of it was one of the shocking, jarring moments. Remember when your mom says, "But Chad, you should go easy on girls. It's hard yes. for them to lose weight." Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah Chad, that. it's hard. Chad, just be yourself. They're not on our side. Why they're is not? That? No, they're and not. You, they're on and, Team Woman. And what it what it proved to me is there anyone that loves you more than your mother? Uh, no, I don't know. No, so. <laughs> no. And, and even so it's your not, mother will lie to you about women. Right. And, That's and the it's, point. And it's not conscious. This programming, this, this instinct is stronger than the love for their own children. And it's, yep. and I, it also slapped me in the cry. This is many years ago, but it slapped me across the face where it's like, did my mom just say maybe the girl got hit by a truck? I'm like, to what extents and lengths will you people go to run cover for your for your team here, right? To excuse and, poor female behavior, right? Right. And so I was, I was, uh, and that was one of the 
lights that went on many, many years ago where I realized yeah. something was amiss where that is now an accept. Oh, we got hit by, it's like, well, there's a lot of chicks getting hit by trucks. Cause like my average was seven out of 10 would flake. Okay. So 70% of the women are getting hit. A lot of <laughs> trucks jump in the curb. A lot of bad the, drivers. A lot of bad truck drivers out there. Dude, I got another decent one for you regarding my mom. Cause I know you met her and you like her. I you love know. your mom to death. I love her. And she's a wonderful woman. For whatever reason, and man, this used to piss me off. My mom used to never, ever, ever honor my wishes and not continuing to communicate with my exes over <laughs> social media. Oh, God. <laughs> Cuddle Wookums and my mom are still liking each other's statuses. Oh, you know. yes. Oh. Did oh, you explain God. to your mom that Cuddle Wookums was evil and was the type to like make false that you had to have cops and all that? Did any of that? So, so my parents met her a few times and right. the funniest part of all this, no matter how much I told my mom, all of this, it was still somehow my fault. At least a little bit. My mom would be like, well, you shouldn't have done this. You've done that. <laughs> so Yeah. <laughs> You know what the greatest thing about that story and that, that whole ordeal you went through, Chad? I would love to know that. The best thing about it is it wasn't me. That's the best part <laughs> of that story. <laughs> Anytime, no matter how bad you had it, I was like, thank God that ain't me. Oh, woo. I, well, here's the double clear. silver lining. I don't, you know, knock on wood here. I don't think it'll ever be that bad for me ever again in that area. I hope not. Well, and great one. Tell me if this may have been your experience, but I, I every guy has that one. I had I, that, that the girl I had was, uh, I think it was 23 or 24. And you don't think people are that irrational or that evil, that you must have done something wrong. And so you always try and this is when you're still a good guy. And you're trying to do what's what's right. And every guy goes through this hellish, crazy, maddening experience where you're trying to do this. What did I do wrong? You're trying to unlock this formula algorithm because you're like, I, I must be missing something huge. And it's like, no, T good looking girls, especially rich ones, are just bitches. That's what it, they tend to be a royal pain in the ass. They tend to be spoiled by the guys who date them and their fathers. All right. And, it, and when they're younger, they're just a. And that's, I would say the majority of them, not, not to that weapons grade level, not all of them have bipolar and are going to claim fake rape accusations and all that other stuff. But there's a higher percentage that you might think. And it's, it's this, if there's a lesson you new young boys can learn early on, it's that, yes, there are evil girls out there and there's more of them than you think. And the second they say, oh, I got bipolar or they play some fucking pouty pout game. If you don't know, I'm not telling you fucking run. You're not missing anything. It's not more complicated than that. She is a mean, spoiled psychopath that you need to leave alone. Irola went through one. I think Rich went through one. I mean, that's that's what you have to. There are evil people in the world. And a lot of times it take the form of a spoiled Western hot chick. So go just it's not you. Don't stick around. Leave. I had to learn it the hard way, but. Well, remember. great one. Did you have a galvanizing? I, I, I'm assuming every guy has at least one of these. You know, I have to say I've been very fortunate. I And keep in mind for people listening who don't know anything about me, I have not dated a girl in like over 10 years. But the girls that I have, I have no like seriously psycho girlfriends in my past. I mean, I've dated a number of girls. I mean, none of them were perfect. I'm not perfect. But no, none of them were like seriously oh. Psycho, call the cops, restraining order, bizarre. Slash, you've never I mean, had I've been your tires slashed. Never had no, your no. Keep. I've no. Wow. I've never had that. I've and maybe I've just been very fortunate. Like I say, they've all had some kind of you know normal human problems, but none of them were slash your tires, call the cops <laughs> on you, boil your bunny rabbit. I've never yeah. had that. And maybe I've just been very fortunate. The one I had went ape shit because I bought some ice cream one time. And I'm like, what's wrong with ice cream? And like, here I am so dumb. Like, is it the type? <laughs> and then, I, like, I just can't have ice cream around. And I'm like, what? what? Well, she was bulimic. So she'd go eat it and she'd oh, jam it uh, throw up. And and uh, oh, in hindsight, yeah, you're no right. No Sebastian Joe's for her. No <laughs> Sebastian Joe's for her. No, no. Yeah, take her to the cheesecake factory. It's not <laughs> ice cream. Yes. Yeah, so, that's going to be interesting. I bet you one in 10, 
you know, you oh, you dumb boys out there listening, you're gonna you're gonna think these coronal romances. <laughs> are you following the, no. the corona romance? Coromances, coromance, coromance. Yeah. All these coromances out there that you boys think you're having right now. Oh, and I dude, should we just call it now? Like, guys, when the time comes, if you've been like Skyping or FaceTiming or Zooming with these girls you meet online, it comes time to meet. I want your numbers, I want your stories. Yeah, not your not the statistics. phone numbers, I want your statistics. Yes. What I'm saying. Yes. I want to throw in. I'm I'm actually not doing a whole lot of that. Like I'm what you're talking about. I'm not doing. I'm not spending yeah. that much. Same time here. here. I yeah. for the last like five or six days, the weather here has been great. I've been like out on the trails and stuff, talking to girls in person. I've done virtually nothing online yeah. because I think it's going to go nowhere. I mean, we're right. It's going to be ninety percent or more flake. I think it's a total waste of time. You know, Most likely, no, I, yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking for the rank of file out there. Sure, and, you know, absolutely. Our audience, our audience is a little more couth and, and street smart, so I don't think any – if they are forming these coromances online. Coromances. Coromances. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to have to tweet that out. And, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, you know, I'm not opposed to people, like, investing a small amount of time in the coromances. Like, if you've got some time, you know, a couple of hours a day or whatever. I mean, like, if you're sitting around doing exclusively that – and like nothing else or something that's, but yeah, I mean, throw a little bit of effort into it. Sure. Yeah. Just don't, you know, be, be realistic about your expectations for what's yeah, going to come out have of Have no expectations. Is, is uh, the only time yeah. I'm spending on it is with ones I actually did meet in person before this okay. whole thing. I wouldn't do it with someone I've never met. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I just think for out there, the normies conformies, look, they have fucking, happy hour parties now online okay yeah. i i can't wait i can't wait to see the numbers bear out on this one where uh madison or tiffany or whatever just disappears uh I, it and i just want i just want to have this pointed out we predicted it here that's all you know yeah it's, it's yeah uh, because it we're was, geniuses well no we're just experienced but same diff. What I like about this is this is not real world. This isn't meat space, but it's kind of like forecasting, like trying to take our wisdom and knowledge and forecast something we don't know for sure that's going to happen. But by God, I almost guarantee it's going to be. 90%. Oh, I know it for sure. No doubt in my mind. Yeah, yeah. the flake rate. That's a positive. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll bet money on that. Um, let's do a little bit of super chess. This won't be a terribly long one unless we go long. Uh, but you've said it before. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, you want to take this one? No, let's let's have our celebrity guest, the great one, read the uh, the super chats. Can you read that great one? You see it on the screen. Ozzy Guitar Man for five dollars. Yeah. He says, "Clary, what's your thoughts about tech bros like dude bros who code, drink kombucha, <laughs> and vote left be, leftist BS?" I, I don't. I know if tech they're tech bros. bros. I don't know if they're those are tech bros. Aren't those just like Silicon Valley nerds who? Yeah, pay sixty five percent in taxes and claim to be feminists. And I, I look, I have I have respect for any guy that coats. Okay, that's legit. That's more legit profession and degree than me. But you throw in the drink kombucha and vote for leftist BS. I mean, that's a specific type of coder. Most of the coders I know, the IT guys are conservatives. Um, but you get out on the West Coast, I'm probably sure they, you know, I, I'm not too familiar with tech bro culture. But if what he says is mm -hmm. is stereotypically true. Uh, I, Hey, thanks for the hard work. Thanks for paying 65% of taxes so that, you know, all the California parasite class can live off of you, but oh, you drink kombucha and, and vote for leftists. So you're really good with math and science, but you have no independent thinking skills whatsoever. So like you're a talented NPC, I guess hmm. I, <laughs> you got a really good skill. You support yourself, but, but you don't think like philosophically or even empirically about it. It's just, well, what you were told, right? Yeah. I don't know. Have you guys ever ran into do a uh, tech bros? I I haven't really. Not really out here. Um, yeah, same here. I don't think I know any tech bros. I've known a lot of IT guys in the past, but not lately. Yeah, I don't know if our paths cross a lot of tech bros. Like most of the tech, the few tech bros that I know are from India or China, even. Yeah. So I don't think they're typical. <laughs> Maybe they are. All right, go ahead with the next one. Great one. <clears throat> from bacon comments five dollars 56 cents homeless population files for unemployment due to no people on freeway exits to panhandle <laughs> from in other news thanos slash strange 2020 huffington post 
I uh, is that happening, Bacon? Like, is it? Send me a news story because if there's no one panhandling anymore because the workers are no longer queuing up at the metered ramps, <laughs> I'd love to see that. I would love to see that. Um, and then I was always going to go uh, McLean Stark for my dream <laughs> uh, presidential, but I could see Thanos. Thanos, nobody else, because why would you need? I don't know why you need a Thanos me 2020. Hmm. Like, don't worry, I'll pick up you. If you happen to die there, President Thanos, don't worry, I'll Vice President Clary will make sure you like, snap that finger. Seems like an onion article or Babylon B. Well, <laughs> I've seen one pinky in the brain for 2020. Mm. Pretty good. Uh, Bacon, go ahead, another one. Bacon comments for $2.23. Speaking of chicks, homework, plenty of fish, yikes. Hmm? Oh, have you guys gone on plenty of fish? Not in years. Not yet. A long, yeah. long time ago. Isn't That's bottom that the of the barrel. I've heard okay. it's plenty of whales nowadays. Yes. <laughs> is it uh, is it free? Yeah. Uh, there's, well, I mean, I was on years ago. There was a free level then. I'm sure there still is. So what? All right. Yeah. But uh, Match.com, that's the big one, right? That's the one you pay for? Uh, yeah. Back in the day, that was before all the swiping apps. That was the big one. Yeah, oh, I've, so, I've so, never yeah, been on Match.com, so I don't know for sure. I, I'm just wondering because, I don't know, two years ago I was paid to go on Tinder and see what <laughs> it was about. And I'm like, yes. what the fuck is this? This is the dumpster of America. What oh, it is. is. This? So I'm like, if this is if this is standard or normal, like it couldn't have been. There must be some normal looking people out there. So I guess plenty of fish is even worse than that. I haven't been on it in, in like five years. Well, six years, and I thought it was the worst I'd ever yeah. seen. I mean, I haven't fish. done the Plenty of Fish in well over 15 years, and it was terrible. I mean, I'm yeah. still on the OK Cubit, and it's a, it's a, it's well, anyway. Well, let me, there, there are no words. That, let <laughs> me ask you this uh, great one because yeah. this is an experience that Chad has. Now, you are, you are older than me and Chad. We'll just being put it that a way. famous CPA who has women throwing themselves <laughs> at him. Oh, yeah. No, I've <laughs> never had that. Me neither. <laughs> he uh, he'll send me occasional screenshot of some gal from some dating app. It'll be 43, 45. Oh, yeah. And yeah. and it'll say and then on the on the thing about kids, it'll say someday. Have you ran into that great one? Oh God, yes. I have I have <laughs> literally Hitler Liter like literally three, Hitler? like three hundred screenshots from OK Cupid that I'm sitting on that I've got. It. But yeah, you see all the time like forty year old women. I want to have kids one day, someday. Yeah, You're I'm like, just when? like, okay, sweetheart, you, you don't understand that life is finite, do you? <laughs> well, Chad, you've been your your experience has been corroborated by a completely different person in a completely different part of the country. Oh, so, no, it's totally true. They, yeah, there are so many women like 35 and older who want to have children someday. Yeah, yeah I, it I is think, absolutely a thing. Well, I tried to give some of them the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe some of the ones that are very late 30s or early 40s, they're only saying this because they think that's what guys <laughs> want to hear, even if they're not I mean, planning on having kids. Maybe. I, I don't uh, know where they'd get the impression guys want to hear that. But then again, I mean, you can't really comprehend what happens in the female mind anyhow because i think it could be because those same women were getting rejected by men and that was the excuse that the men were saying they're like well i mm. might want kids but that's probably bs on their end anyway you're mm -hmm. you're being awfully charitable uh, and under <laughs> no you are and i understand you that. are, you yeah, are Chad. Well, yeah no but, you're, but you're being... a good person that's the difference between mm. him and me mm. getting there. <laughs> we're working on him yeah but yeah not... I... <laughs> <laughs> no doubt there are some uh, gals that have that uh, experience or line of logic and, and what you say could be true. Uh, but no, the majority of them was they're bowing down at the altar of debt and consumerism and, mm -hmm. and careerism and taxes and feminism that now it's too late. So um, that's, um, but I, I here be something curious to great one. You got to like, Pull, pull, post those pictures or do something with all that data. You got enough data. How much more data do you need? I'd be real curious to see, like, okay, what's their political leanings and what's oh, their background? Oh, they're all leftists. Okay, I mean, well, they're, on, they're, on, they're on OK Cupid, you can indicate your political leaning right there, like front and center. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they are all, I mean, 98% leftist. 
Every once in a while, you'll find a woman who is a centrist and very rarely you'll find one who claims to be actually right wing slash conservative, mm -hmm. but it is, it is 98% leftist. Yeah. Cool. No, By no. the way, I only send you, you know, you and Atham a few of those. Like, there's so many of them. Like, you know. <laughs> what? I, I can't get too worked up about it because it doesn't affect me and it's comeuppance. It's balance. It's equilibrium. It's karma. Um, it's now watch the show. Enjoy the show time. I uh, Yeah. I just... Uh, and I, I'm going to enjoy seeing people wreathe in pain by their own hands. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> oh, God, yes. <laughs> Uh, any of you guys know who David Icke is? I isn't he a, a British guy who's saying that like this whole coronavirus thing is one hundred percent BS? I think that's who that is. Hang on, it says Bill and Elon are evil. Uh, Bill, Bill Gates, Gates and Elon, Elon Musk. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, may I mean, depending on your definition of evil, maybe David I mean, Icke. Oh, this guy! I did a. Someone paid me to do a Clary test on him. And yeah, he's he's just a conspiracy theorist guy um, <clears throat> in Britain. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 5G and all that. So, no. No, but I, if I, you say it with a British accent, I mean, it's hmm. got some credibility, right? Well, look at, look at Stefan Molyneux. Job. Stefan yeah. Molyneux doesn't say shit. He never said one smart thing in his life, but he's got that British accent. accent. You know, he's been playing cool. video games I mean, lately yeah. on his stream. I mean, kind of like Adam it. Piggott. I mean, if you just talk with oh an Australian God, accent, yeah. you know, these guys don't know. Why, I, I, I don't say anything useful, but women just throw themselves at me. You know, I can't help it. You know who also is a complete moron, but people think he's smart. Think he's smart because of his accent. Aaron Clary? Jack Napier. Oh. That oh. guy, oh my, these, these three idiots. Man, dude, you don't have three IQ points among all three of them. That's no, not a bit. I am, of course, joking about all three. <laughs> but uh, What were you going to say, Chad? Sorry. Oh, I, nothing, nothing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to bang through these real quick. Uh, cheap cinema for five bucks. Do you think China will be held accountable for this disaster? It already is. Um. No one, people are moving out of China. No one is even going to use their labor. And there's another people, a group of companies or countries rather that are thinking like, yeah, you know what? Maybe we don't pay you Chinese the money we uh, borrowed from you when you bought our, maybe your, your bonds with those QCIT numbers are null and void. Too bad for you. Um, hmm. That could happen. New Renaissance for the United States. Sure fucking hopes. So. I don't think it's going to be a new renaissance for the United States because even though there are three or four major economic revolutions we could take advantage of after this, not the American population is too stupid. <laughs> to, yeah. I don't think they will. I will be back to commuting. We're still going to have to occupy two sets of buildings, commercial real estate and residential real estate, instead of like converting the commercial real estate we have now into residential lowering housing i don't think i don't think we're only, and i i think most parents have proven that they can't parent and they're going to ship nope. their kids back to daycare as oh they as can't wait to get their kids back in school i've heard they, so much complaining from parents that have to take care of their children i just want to strangle all of them yeah. i feel more optimistic for some reason i think some of this stuff is going to stick obviously not all of it but uh, well, I think the weird social distancing crap is going to stick. Well, yeah, that'll is going to cause a lot of problems, but it's also going to cause a lot of profit if you're in the construction business because you have to rebuild everything to well, accommodate. Are, are you guys saying this is going to be permanent? People are going to be staying six feet away from each no, other? No, like, yeah, I would, yeah, no, I think this is going to become a thing because the, would, they're gonna, people are going to latch onto this. I, I was saying more, I think you're going to see a lot more work from home, you know, and, um, and taking courses online. I meant that in a positive way. Like when things go back to normal, oh. there's going to be improvements. Yeah. But yeah, see, there's see, yeah be I'm saying Chad's trying to be positive. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, 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 I respect that. But see, like the learning, the, the, the working from home, I think that would be great. But I don't think that people can overcome what Cappy always talks about until the boomers die. They don't know you're working if they can't see you. And I think no. we're not going to be able to trans. I mean, maybe a few places will make the transgression to working from home, but I think most places aren't going to be able to do it. 
and the schools, there's no way the teachers and the college professors, yeah, no yeah they're not no going to give that up. They're no. the kids are going and, right back to the campus as soon as and, they can, and the parents are going to force them there. And the, That's right, the and thing. the parents, parents. want to get rid of their kids. Yep. I, so I, it's a great I, dream, but it ain't going to happen. I'll be, yeah. I'll, I'll grant Chad a little bit of credibility. I do think some people are going to go online. I like, for example, yeah, sure. Chad, your clients are who are stubborn, stick in the muds. Like, ah, I need my yeah. accounting done. And now they're, they're waking up. It's I been just, helpful. Yeah. I think some kids are going to say, why did I commute? Wasn't it great sleeping in that extra hour every day, not having to go to school at a physical location? I think right. people, but, but it's, we're going to have traffic jams again. Yeah, I yeah. enjoy it. Enjoy the free traffic now, guys. It's good. It's oh, great. Oh man, yeah, it's great. I'm never in traffic. I don't know. Well, <laughs> you never leave your apartment. Uh, Not now. Great one. How's uh, I-25 nowadays? Is that just open up all the time? You know, I actually haven't been near I-25 lately, oh. but I can tell you that just here in Fort Collins. I mean, I was out the other day at 5 p.m. on a weekday, and normally the traffic in Fort Collins would be a mess, and there was like nothing. I've talked to a couple of bus drivers and cause the bus system is still running and the bus drivers like, this is the greatest thing ever. There's no traffic. We just breeze <laughs> along. Oh. The bus drivers are loving it. I went to visit Lucifer and Geronimo and went straight across the interstate. And uh, I was like, oh crap, I'm gonna go through downtown Minneapolis and not a single thing of traffic went through the Lowry tunnel, the Lowry tunnel chat. That's where Sebastian Joe's is. So just so you have a oh, reference yeah. point. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. Because a lot of people, oh, here's the Metrodome, here's this thing, and then Sebastian Joe's, and that's about the only important thing in the Twin Cities right now. <laughs> uh, we got a compliment from one of the few girls in, uh, oh, look at that, great one. Uh, thank you. The great one has a great announcement voice. That's my theatrical training. Every once in a while, I actually utilize it to Where'd you its get full your, potential. Where did you learn your theatrical training? At... A place none of you have heard of, San Juan College in Farmington, New Mexico. Oh, is that it's a community there? college, and it was fantastic. You know how much at San Juan College? You know how much college costs per credit hour in Farmington, New Mexico? Yeah, I'm gonna guess it was fifty bucks, if that. Thirty-five dollars yeah. a credit hour, <clears throat> yeah. as opposed to like CSU, where it's three hundred dollars a credit hour. All they we all used to joke that our textbooks cost more than the tuition, which they yeah, really did. They really it was did. great. I yeah, it was a really good college. That was where I, I learned theater. I th oh, there. I thought you were gonna uh, where you learned your theatrics was the theater, and then you said theater. it. So thank you, great theater. 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 Yep. Where is Farmington? Farmington, New Mexico. It is the northeast corner of New Mexico. It's right under Durango, Colorado. Because when I lived in Farmington, we always used to joke that the best thing about living, to, living in Farmington is that Durango is less than an hour away. Oh, because so everyone like would go up to Durango, Colorado to have fun because Farmington was so boring. Huh. Great one. Did you ever hang out in Cortez or go to Mesa Verde National Park? I've been to Cortez to a few times. Yeah. I Never love Cortez. That is a great little sleepy Western town, cheap yeah. hotels and center mm -hmm. to everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you go up to yeah. Uca Padre Mountains if you ever went up to Durango, like Silverton and all that? Uh, yeah, I took the, I went on the, you ever been on the Durango Silverton narrow gauge railroad? No. That goes, oh, that's a blast. What does it mean, do? Go up to Ure or where does it go? It just goes up to, well, it goes up to Silverton and from there you can go where the hell ever. I mean, I just went around the town and everything, but yeah, oh. you could, you could go wherever the hell you want. Oh, but it's just a good time train. riding up on the, on the railroad. Ah, oh, it's fun. Boy, Chad should leave Chicago someday and see the other parts of this great nation. You should, Chad. It's good times. <laughs> I can always go to Santa Fe whenever I want to. <laughs> Santa Fe's all right. All right, go ahead. Hit this one, great one. Ryan Oaks for $5. Hey, Cleary, would you accept a consulting request to smoke a blunt during a live stream <laughs> in a legal state, of course, Colorado, Nevada, et cetera? I would have to look up the rules according to YouTube. But for an egregious um, sum, because I've heard some people are fucked up the next day. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So not only for the cost of the blunt, but I want a shit. We're talking like twenty five hundred dollars. What? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I do not want like a, a pot hangover or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, for twenty five hundred bucks, I'd do it, and the cost of like some really good pot that has no hangover or the munchies or whatever. Hmm. 
Let me know when you find one of those. <laughs> well, how bad's the hangover, Chad? No, the hangover's fine, but I mean, I... I always get like the munchies. I get couch lock. This is with indica or sativa. What's what's couch lock? Couch- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty that? self pretty self explanatory. Like you just where you get locked in on just wanting to sit on the couch. You just can't. No matter how much you want to try, you just can't get off the couch. You're like, uh, because you feel sick or you're just too tired. No, you're just like your mind. You're just really happy there. You're just so relaxed and you're so like dazed that uh, it, it it ain't happening. You're not getting off the couch. All right. So right. kind of like having a hot girlfriend. You just you don't want to get <laughs> off of her and do anything else because you're just so dazed. Uh, I'll let you know when I ever have one. What? Uh, but no. I'm bummed. <laughs> Self deprecation. Okay. And if she shows up, I don't um, care about the uh, the high and the good parts of the pot. Okay. I'm sure I'll enjoy the money. I, yeah. No, I'm not scared about the money. I'm scared about the after effects, like the day after. Mm. Like Bill Burr did no, a podcast no, no. once. Where, what? What's the worst that happens? It's not as bad as an alcohol. I've never had any real hangover. I don't I do it that say, much. I, I mean, yeah. And I've never smoked pot, which is like not me bragging. I just have it. But I know everyone who does because I'm in Colorado. And I've never heard of hangovers from mm-hmm. pot. Okay. All right. Well, then. Never I'm, heard of this. Let's call it two thousand dollars, all right? Oof. And the and the price. Yeah. Well, um, what now? I got to go to Colorado. I got to find someone who agrees to let me do that. Then I got to make an idiot of myself on the internet. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> come yeah, to Illinois. Know, it's well, totally legal. Do here. that all the time. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll come down to Chad's place and I'll do. You can hey, do it on man. my couch. I don't want to get off the couch though, man. It's so comfy and uh, comfy and fluffy. You laugh, but when it hits you, you're just kind of like, I couch, dude. Where I am, I the most supple leather I've ever touched, man. (laughs) Dude, and you ain't going nowhere. (laughs) Going to balance and debits and credits today, Chad. All right, (laughs) far out. Dude, man, we should totally like take all the income statements that are accrual <laughs> and switch them to cash, man. Wouldn't it be great? So I had this pothead for a freshman year of college roommate. Um, and of course, I'd never done it before. And this was randomly assigned. And all I remember is the first week of school, like we had this terrible, terrible thunderstorm, like just tornadoes and it knocked out all the power. And as soon as the power went out, the dude's like high as a motherfucker. He just goes, whoa, the lights went out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. all right, that's uh, that's what smoking pot's like. Uh, Red Crusader for two bucks says, OK Cupid equals OK Karen. <laughs> that's not uh, true. <laughs> he's right. Well, he's right. so plenty of fish is for just low grade. Tinder's just got to be low grade too. Low grade. Uh, mm-hmm. Bumble is probably the OK Karen's and OK Cupid is mid range, and then the best is Match. Hinge. Hinge is that the dating site or is that an app? It's an app. That's what I've heard people are saying. Like these things change uh, so much, but most people seem to be on that one now. What's their uh, gimmick? You're connected. It's like six degrees of that Kevin Bacon Kevin thing. Bacon. Like, <laughs> right? Yeah, you're connected to somebody. If you're getting a match, you're somehow connected to them. Yeah, I Facebook. tried that for a little while. I got nothing out of it. But it's so it's based on Facebook. So it yeah. trolls basically like people you're friends with on Facebook, then it trolls mm-hmm. their friends. I don't know how many degrees of separation it goes. But yeah, so in theory, you're connected to these people somehow okay. through people yeah. you know on Facebook. I think it's just in theory, though. It's probably just everybody free for all. Yeah, it could very well be. I think we're rapidly approaching the date where and I've, I've never really done online dating that it's such a mess. No one does it anymore. It'll force people back into the real world. But that's yeah. just me. That could All right. Be true. <clears throat> Go ahead. Handle this one. Uh, great one. Bacon comments for $2.23. Several upcoming shows on POF. It's even worse. <laughs> so yeah, thinking, oh, probably so. He's going to do what? them. Yeah, he's going to yes. do them. At yeah. Yeah. Shows. Which you can find at thegoddamnbacon.com uh, for his podcast there. I tried listening, Bacon. I tell you only because I care about you. Um, <clears throat> you need to increase your audio quality. <clears throat> he, he had Nick and Athamon, and it was just 
tinny as it's like mm-hmm. it was just recording a phone up to a microphone <laughs> while rattling mm-hmm. on aluminum foil. Oh, it sound like that anyway, having those two on. But uh, yeah, so right. it was it was pretty bad. And and I've told Bacon because I care about him that he needs to put one podcast episode per post, but he doesn't listen to the great one because the great one doesn't know anything about podcasting, even though he's been doing it for fifteen years and 15 knows how to put tags on his audio files. Than, why always on Instagram? Why not another platform? Mm-hmm. All right, Fonnie Perry for two British pounds. What's the point of life, or is this question was the point of life if you are religious is to get to the afterlife? So you would follow the credence and rules of that religion. Uh, if you are agnostic or atheist, your point of life is to maximize your fun and utility, and if your moral value while you're alive here today. And I would say leave a legacy so that when you die. Uh, you weren't just this flash in the pan. You have left other bits of work for other people to appreciate on, in theory, into the infinity. This is our legacy here. This, uh... this is it. <laughs> Remember those yep. guys yeah. who stood up and said the things that were very unpopular and led an entire generation of men to avoid poverty and divorce and worthless degrees? Remember the guys that, that took the millennials and held them up as the star of, of what not to do? <laughs> <laughs> said all future generations don't do this those are some pretty great motherfuckers remember well those played. guys who who questioned how many girls are actually getting hit by trucks yeah those guys <laughs> you know what's funny is down the road it weirder things have happened all of a sudden this does become a religion or something and then they're like quoting us in future college classes saint clary, saint clary said. <laughs> canonized in 2128 he came up with the 70% of women did not get hit by, and he proved it mathematically. 70% of women were not getting hit by trucks. He was thrown in jail. Like, uh, what was it, Galileo for saying? Yes. This? Was, yeah. I'm thrown in for jail. questioning how many women are hit yeah. by trucks. 70% of women were, hey, 70% of women aren't getting hit by trucks. Oh. <clears throat> Alex of Oz, I think Australia, for 10 uh, no, Austria. Austria is part of the Euro, right? They're on the Euro. Th- that's Australia, I think. Aust- yes. Uh, hey, gentlemen, hope you all had a good Easter. What are your thoughts on property management for other landlords versus doing tax work in Australia as a job? And everyone go listen to the great one. Uh, if Thanks, gonna, Alex. I, I recommend becoming a CPA over a landlord. Uh, Chad may disagree. Uh, but if you're going to be a landlord, just get one property, be it a duplex triplex or quadplex, nothing more than that, and live on the property. And that's how I kind of, that was one of the things that slingshotted me out of poverty uh, was living in, in the house that I rented out. Um, Why not do both, you know, <clears throat> study, get your CPA, make a lot of money, buy a building or two and rent it out? Well, not even two, but that's what I was saying. If you live in your house, you can do both. Yeah. Uh, yeah but if you're like, oh, yeah, if you're a land dude, you're fixing toilets and- you're now housing the most volatile, evil thing on the planet, humans. <laughs> I, I really, seriously, and especially depending on where you live. I don't know what it's like in Australia, but in Minnesota, you you really don't own your property anymore. You got to lease out to Section Eight applicants, or you got to you can't reject them because they're Section Eight. Um, there's a like the building requirements, the tax, the taxes alone mean you're renting your property from the city. Yeah, um, same here. So I mean. It is highly contingent on the municipality or the local government that you live in. And as you have a country or a society becoming more and more socialistic, they're going to view housing as a right. And, um, you know, yeah, it worked great for me. But me and my buddy, he used to own property in, in Minneapolis, too. We were just thinking. It was like the, the, the X-Wing and the Millennium Falcon flying out of the Death Star and Return of the Jedi, like, blew up right behind him. It was <laughs> like that. We just got out in time. Uh, it's the the taxes are just insane. I could look it up, but I think the taxes on my old house are like seven hundred dollars a month now. Oh God! Uh, Holy crap! Uh, homeschool time, two bucks. MJ merch, go twins. Chat a millionaire. Yeah, oh, that's a good idea. What if we did? Uh, you guys know I set up my merch account. Huh. So uh, I finally set up an account with Redbubble that allows you to put images on like coffee mugs and calendars and whatever else. And I put uh, the Corona Chan uh, checkup on them. Uh, and I've already had a couple sales. 
But homeschool time's got a good idea. If MJ, Mary Jo, wanted to uh, mm -hmm. pose in some kind of bikini, we throw that on a coffee mug. That'd probably sell real good. And then I can sell my dad on the idea of putting her on the cover of the tax guide if I you know, don't know. <laughs> you, you, you know that's not going to happen. You know, I know. He, he's not going to. She All she has to do, any again, this goes for any woman who's listening. All you have to do is wear a classic 1950s dress, look nice, have a pan of cookies, put that on a coffee mug. Holy shit. You're I rich. <laughs> I want to take care of my man on the back. Oh my God. Chad, you a millionaire yet? Um, soon. Good. Good. <laughs> I'm well not on my way there. Uh, this pay. guy. Anyone know this guy? Who's this fella? Uh, some caver, you know. Cave dweller? Cave dweller. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I didn't know. I didn't know Anthem smoke pot. Maybe that's why he's so calm. <laughs> yeah, Maybe he's see? always high, and that's why he's so he's so chillax. It's not like power or stoicism or self control. He's just smoking a doobie. <laughs> Secret ingredient. Yeah. All right, Miguel Angel Casillas for five bucks had the best starburst ever. Was watching Rolo on the live stream, educating us on the Holland Good Time Girls. And looking forward on capitalizing tough times here soon. What's best Starburst? Starburst. Like the candy? That's what I thought. I have no idea. Isn't it on like five flavors? Here's what? Orange, the... strawberry, <clears throat> lemon, cherry. Cherry's the best one. Oh, yeah. What's the pink one? Is that strawberry? Hmm. I think. I think yeah. Yeah. Strawberry. that tasted like ass. I didn't like the strawberry one. Hmm. Oh, God. I want to know what the Holland Good Time Girls are. Yeah, what's... <laughs> that sounds a lot more interesting to me than Starburst. Miguel, Miguel could have spent $5.20 and gotten myself a couple more characters there to work on. The... <laughs> <laughs> could have made a complete sentence. Or for he could have just sent us a picture of the Holland Good Time Girls. I mean, if they get those have... knee-high socks, you know? <laughs> Nonstop Dre, who, if you gentlemen did not know, he is a six foot three, completely jacked and ripped black dude who all the white women want. If you oh, were wondering, yeah. if you're wondering <laughs> if Nonstop Dre was a good looking tall black dude who has an enormous penis, by the way, yes, yes, he is. Yes, he does. I thought I'd heard that before. I don't know um, where we heard it before. Somewhere. <laughs> well. In case no one knew. Uh, for two bucks, Ray says, uh, should have Mary Jo sell bathwaters on OnlyFans. Uh, you, look, here's here's the thing. That actually probably was a money loser for that girl because do you know what, what logistics go into selling water and transporting it and selling it and putting the labels for thousands of people? That's a pain in the ass. Like when I had to mail out my bumper stickers, that was a pain in the ass, but it was still worth it because of the marketing involved. But I don't think uh, Mary Jo's got the time for that. Not that Dre's being serious either. Go ahead, Chad, take this one. MXWS, $2 Canadian. I got out of college just before the SJW crap exploded. When when do you think all that exploded? Like Probably when right after. Yeah, him and I must have graduated at the same time, but I got out in 97. So and and they were already doing that like diversity things like oh, shut the mm -hmm. fuck up and you know get the fuck out of here, um, yeah the the arts I'm sorry yeah. about two thousand is when that mm -hmm. started started happening, because it already kind of was happening with with the uh, Xers you know they were they they were protesting dumbass shit too and uh, oh we want free this and free that I mean it, it was happening, but at least back then it wasn't like big as beautiful that was. That never happened until after the 90s. And everything is rape. Miguel. Everything. Yeah, Miguel Angel Casillas, $2. Mm -hmm. Rolo, dude. Rolo, giving us millennials and Zoomers sage advice, concisely put. Even more concisely put? <laughs> the convenient 450 page book is this book here, How Not to Become a Millennial. You know, I'm just saying, if you guys want. <laughs> We don't have to worry about like Vince was like, was like, do we have to worry about anything? I'm like, no, no, it's not going to go viral. Uh, we're okay. We're we're fine. <laughs> no one's going to hunt us down. Uh, ten bucks, cheap cinema. Cheap cinema. 
If there is a more important time in history to wake up the hell up, this is it. We have passed a Rubicon on free speech, personal freedom, free market economy. I like the enthusiasm. I you know. But go, okay, go wake them up, cheap cinema. <laughs> yeah, good go, luck on that. Hang on. Let me see if I got a book here. Oh, my God. Have you guys heard of this book? No. Well, no. What's this? What's it's, a new, it's a new book out. Oh, Is wait. It? It's not a new book. It's almost 10 fucking years old. And no one listened to this, so I don't think anyone's going to listen now. That's when I graduated from grad school. I just realized 2011. Oh. Oh. Mm. And that's it. We're caught up on that. Um, all right. I got an article here. Mm. I know how you guys love uh, the Twin Cities, right? You guys are big fans of the Twin Cities. Oh, I love the Twin Cities. My I favorite am. place ever. Yeah. <clears throat> well, because of the Adina and every day I need attention. Uh, from our newspaper called the Star Tribune, coronavirus fears push more Twin Cities homeless to live in tents. Now, I want you guys to pay attention. <laughs> I want you to pay attention. And if there's something that doesn't add up, you pause. You, you ask me to pause, and then you ask the question, and see if we're missing some bits of it. Because Chris Cirrus at the Star Tribune, he wrote this, all right? Mm. And I want to see if you guys, there's a couple bits of things missing. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Hernandez hunched her shoulders against the biting wind and contemplated how she would find water to wash herself and her children. Okay, pause. Mm, okay, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Have you heard of indoor plumbing? I mean, where do you, where can you not find water in a city? Public library, park? Well, those are closed. Uh, oh, well, that's true. That's true. All right, I, fine. Well, there's children. <laughs> oh, God. And her children. That was the worst And her part. children. <laughs> well, of course. Ah. I mean, come on. <laughs> she would probably walk six blocks to the nearest laundromat, uh, fill a plastic jug, and haul it back to her tent at a shopping cart. Later, with her back turned to the morning traffic, Hernandez would pour the water over her long, dark hair. If I go early, I won't have to deal with the public. And she said, pausing to find the words, that's, that ho horrible virus that's going around. A month ago, the 40-year-old mother of two and her partner were among the first to pinch a tent <laughs> along the light rail near Hiawatha Avenue. Partner. Do you want me to, do you want me to pause? <laughs> partner. <laughs> partner, yes. Oh, my God. Uh, there is yeah. no, this is one of the indicators of mental illness. Okay, you I, can have a boyfriend and a girlfriend, or you can have a fiancé. Or you can have a husband or a wife, but if you've got a partner, oh, we yeah. already know what 97% of the problem is. It's Dead you. giveaway. Dead what, giveaway. What from a journalistic perspective would be important now? Like if, um, if I'm a journalist, I want to inform the reader. The reader might have a question right now. Let me read that again and see if you guys see what I'm what I'm hinting at. <clears throat> a month ago, the 40-year-old mother of two and her partner were among the first to pitch a tent along the light rail near Hiawatha Avenue and East 28th Street. Why did they decide to do that? Whose kids are these? Oh, right. So we don't know if it's her and her partner's kids. Is your part? Are you referring to your husband as your partner? Is that your husband and the father of your children? Is this a your husband not the father of your children is this your husband the father of one it could be a female well, yeah I, I i actually don't go that way because here's the thing if the partner was actually the father of both children this wouldn't be in the news and that is an outstanding thing because i'm thinking like if the father was around right right the, chances obviously are, this is right. not the father of both of those children that's why this is in the news. It's this is not a ha ha. They said partner. She's a lesbian. That has nothing to do with right. that. No, no, absolutely not. Rights. This is a huge big question as to excuse me, where the fuck is the? Could we at least say sperm donor? Like, how do these kids get into the picture, and what's the relation to the to the quote unquote partner? Right. All right. I'll continue on. They want to be alone to insulate themselves from the pandemic. Do you guys know anything about <laughs> Hiawatha in East 28th Street? No. Okay. Do you think they're going off into the boonies well, where there are no people? Didn't they just say it's near a railway? It is. Yeah. In, it is in Minneapolis proper. It is. It's not as densely populated as downtown, but this is, I know the neighborhood It's just straight South of downtown. It's right by the railway. There's some, uh, strip malls there and there's a, a neighborhood community and some apartment buildings they're they're not alone they they are by people 
And I don't know what land they're going to live off of because there's no hunting in si the city of Minneapolis. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh... <laughs> they're poaching on the Duke's estate. Yeah, the, yeah, the Duke boys. Boss Hogg and, and uh, Flash will go get them. Uh, I, I'm kind but, of embarrassed. I, I didn't even know that you guys had a, a train, like a public it's transportation It's relatively system. new. It's only about five, six years old. They've already lost billions on it. People aren't paying. And like your uh, L, people are defecating and shitting on it and not oh. paying. So it's it, a matter of fact, your L's probably better because don't, don't you have a, a metro or transit police that come in and kick people off and they don't pay? Yeah, but they're doing a poor job of it these days because the only people on the subway are bums. Homeless. Right yeah. now. Right sure, now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but others have followed turning a once vacant stretch of grass and mud into makeshift encampment with more than two dozen people. Now, let me ask you this. Stretch with an encampment, two dozen people. What's wrong with that if they're trying to avoid the coronavirus? Uh, I would guess that violates the uh, social distancing protocols. Right. Most say Just they feel guess. safe. Yeah. You know, most say they feel sleep or safe, safer sleeping in the open air than being crowded in shelters where physical distancing is impossible. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah, okay. well, five paragraphs down, we get a key bit of the puzzle here, don't we, guys? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they were homeless. Right. Of course. They're in the shelter. Oh, uh, okay. Would this and, and be a problem? You know? And the shelter is a place where viruses spread. Imagine yes. that. Yes. Wow. I mean, I, I give them credit for recognizing that you're safer from the virus outside than you are inside a homeless shelter. I mean, they're not wrong about that part. What would have prevented all of this? This family and these two unfortunate kids being thrown it's still a little cool out here it's not not winter thank god but what would have prevented all of this gentlemen nuclear family nuclear a family. strong economy well Lower how much taxes? how much stronger do you want it than than below the four percent unemployment <laughs> um i'm just pointing out and even before that if people didn't have kids they can't afford Whoa, no, whoa, 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 whoa. I have a right I to have children. I can have I, as many children as I want. Don't you, you tell me what tell to do. tell me what to do with my yeah. body. If she just had two abortions, would she have this problem? No. She would, but her kids wouldn't because her kids wouldn't be around for this. That's true. See, can the government really support? Of course what, it can. They can print more money. They, oh, the government can support unlimited children. So how well are people doing now that they've kicked the father out of the life. They're oh, Fantastic. they're in homeless shelters. No, they're in homeless shelters. Oh no, they're not. They're not in homeless no. shelters. They're in. She is strong and independent, Clary. You need to back off. She you strong know what? and independent. She has a fish bicycle. You in know that what tent she doesn't need down in her homeless encampment. You know what she don't need. No man. She no don't man. Need no man. No man. She's a girl boss, and she probably is a girl boss. On she top is of a girl boss. boss. She is, is there strong a and independent. Woman in the article, like, do they show? Picture? Yeah, it's it's an unfortunate uh, poor woman. I think she's. Okay. Uh, I guess with the name Hernandez, she's Latino. I was going to guess uh, American Indian because uh, actually is a Indian. Uh, what publication is this? Uh, the Star Tribune. It's our standard leftist Marxist rag. Uh, Star mainstream Tribune homeless woman. <laughs> it it doesn't matter. She's she's in rough shape. There's no doubt about it. Uh, as the novel, why do they keep calling it the novel coronavirus? To sound cool, to, yeah, to to make it into a bigger deal than it is to, just, to scare people. As the novel coronavirus tightens its grip, such clusters of tents and sleeping <laughs> bags are appearing in public sp spaces, parks, under bridges, and along transit lines throughout the Twin Cities metro area. <clears throat> Their growing presence has alarmed homeless outreach workers. Oh. They must have solved the problem. I thought they solved the homeless. Weren't we supposed to end homeless? Remember when we were at the grocery store 25 years ago and for an extra quarter, you could help end homelessness? So it didn't work? Well, I did. <laughs> none of those worked, apparently. I thought we had a war on poverty. I mean, uh, did we, we won win it. that? <laughs> yeah, now it's sexism causing this great war. Oh, okay. Because the men Dude. were – it's the misogynies. The misogynies. Oh, misogynies. You weren't mm -hmm. kidding, man. She looks – in bad shape well, here. You do drugs and you breathe. She got, I, hey, hey, she got tattoos though for you. She could have. Oh, tattoo. well, Does she yeah. have any piercings? Uh, let's go back to the. Is she on plenty of fish? 
the, you want to see exactly would be on plenty of fish. You would no, no, I, I, here, here, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't wish to. This woman already has a hard enough life. I don't wish to to pick on her. Yeah, we're not going to publicize have, it. But uh, no, the Star Tribune is on that. Uh, <laughs> who says the absence of basic sanitation supplies at the sites could lead to the rapid spread of the deadly pathogen among the estimated 1,600 unsheltered Minnesotans who sleep outside each night? You know what would prevent them from being unsheltered? A job? Showing up on time for a job regularly and spending less than they make. Hmm. You're asking an awful lot, dude. Yeah, yeah that's no, I'm actually, like too much. I'm actually a uh, asking and requiring of them to be independent. That's the definition. But they already are, don't you? Yeah. See? Oh, we're talking the new independence see, where you're, you're really a dependent. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, like Cuddle Wilkins? Chat. Wasn't Cuddle <laughs> Wilkins living off of her father for the longest time? Uh, With subsidized rent? So. Okay. But she was a strong independent woman, right? She was the strongest, one of the strongest feminists I've ever come across. Didn't you remember how you got some emails saying as much from her? But anyway. Right. Uh, Do you remember the email I sent back to her? I made her cry. He had very, I have a very good uh, well, memory like, of that. I should save that email. Maybe I should oh, read I, it. I still got it. Don't worry. <clears throat> I should read that. Um, this is a slow moving train wreck, said John Tribbett, street outreach program manager at St. Stephen's Human Services in Minneapolis. How much you want to bet if we looked up Tom, John Tribbett? He's never worked a real job. It's in Minnesota. I'd say that's a high likelihood. No offense to Minnesota. In this, he's an outreach manager. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh. He's never contributed anything to the world I, ever. Community yeah. organizer. Outreach manager. I Again, show me one. Just show me one. One liberal, one leftist, one of these nonprofit outreach program manager going to cure AIDS, going to cure cancer, going to stop poverty, feed the children. Show me one that has succeeded in stopping anything. They're stating, show me one who's ever achieved well, any success. They've stopped progress. Well, that's kind of their underlying goal, I'd say. As right. Well. So they have stopped that. Um, people will start dying in tents if we continue on our current path. Since the outbreak <laughs> began, it's county agencies intense. have been focusing on isolating older homeless adults with underlying medical issues who are at greatest risk of dying of the virus. Already, Hennepin County has moved some 260 people into three hotels in St. Louis County in northern Minnesota is securing another 90 hotel rooms. These uh, boy, uh, We are. We misogynist evil right-wingers who pay the taxes and supported ourselves, we're the ones paying the extra taxes. You know how people typically attack me on this? Sorry, I know you're reading, but it's always like, what? You mean you want them to starve and you want them to like freeze to death? That's the typical comeback from someone where I'm like, I don't think we should be paying for this. So how do I, you respond? It, how I respond is if we were tough with them to begin with mm -hmm. when they were children and we didn't constantly bail them out, mm -hmm. they won't let themselves starve. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I got down to 118 pounds. You know what I was acutely aware of in college? How to not waste your money and work My budget, hard. right. I made sure mm -hmm. I had extra shifts. I made sure I right. saved my money. Well, and, and also- when you constantly bail them out. Now, now here's a problem. This is a legit problem that they face. Now you have a 55-year-old who's never had to grow up, has constantly gotten bailed out, has yeah. been indoctrinated mm -hmm. by these fucking worthless social workers. They're entitled, oh, it's the evil white man's fault or it's the rich people's fault or whatever. Not, hey, don't breed no more kids, all right? Uh, do you think they're, oh, and now, as is a lot of the case, they're on some kind of drugs. Do you think now they're capable of getting a job? No. No. And you know what? Yeah. If they do die and starve, I don't care. You know why? Because at least you're ending their misery. And I didn't cause the misery, and I don't owe them shit because the counter is thing is like, what do I owe it to them? Why am I to be enslaved to other people for their mistakes? Why don't you just let these people be and they wouldn't breed in the first place, bringing future generations. These, I mean, think about these poor kids. You think these poor kids are going to stand a shot? You think their lives are going to be great? You know, they're going to go, at best, they're going to go to the Minneapolis public schools where they're going to be trained in the exact same self-pitying bullshit. They're not going to say mom was a whore and I don't know where my fucking worthless dad was. It's the evil Republicans, you know, whatever, Paul Enti's fault or something like that. And they're just going to repeat the same shit. They're not going to learn to code. They're not going to learn to get out of poverty. They're not going to pull a, uh, who was the, the heart surgeon that ran for office? Was it the brain surgeon? Ben, ben Carson. Ben Carson. Oh, they're not yeah. going to, yeah. they're not going to pull a Ben Carson to get themselves out. That's a, that's a one in a million person. So it can, it can end now. 
You can end total future human suffering, or we can have generations of this shit. Now, who's more sympathetic and caring and concerning? I'm just more thinking about it. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba. These efforts have eased dangerous crowding in emergency shelters. We're preventing a broader outbreak among the homeless. So far, two Minnesotans who are homeless have tested positive for COVID-19. But about above, but the measures are primarily targeted people entering the shelters, like the Salvation Army's Harbor Light Center of downtown Minneapolis, while leaving hundreds of others who sleep outside to fend for themselves. Say homeless outreach workers at several Twin City area nonprofits. Uh, some cities, including Los Angeles, San Francisco, have deployed sanitation centers with a port. Let me ask you something. Maybe if cracking down <clears throat> by law for people who shit in the streets, you think that might help? What so about just... providing heroin for the homeless? Does that help? Well, or passing. Help. Remember San Francisco where they passed law saying it's no longer a felony to knowingly pass on HIV. Now it's just a gross misdemeanor. Does that help? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, what could make the world better? It's than all spreading about, viruses around. Right. It's all about looking good now. That's all it is. There's no long-term thought about well, what's going to happen to these people if you if you enable them. Uh, 600 people in Hennepin County load sleep outside of so a transit stadium deemed not fit for human habitation. You know, one thing I've always wondered about the homeless in the Twin Cities. Take a guess. Why do they stay there and not go someplace warmer? How can you Why make are a you... profit on them? <laughs> uh, throws away. <laughs> yeah, <that's good. laughs> I forgot throws who I was away. talking to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm like, what? go south. Why are you here? And it, it dawned yeah. on me, they're so lazy. They won't even go get work up the bus fare to take a trip south. They well, I feel the same way about the ones here. Like our winters aren't as bad as yours, but leave. I mean, oh man, the wind is horrible in Chicago. I, yeah. I know the answer to this because I know several people close to me who are like this. And it's, it's, they're just, they're just lazy. You've always bailed them out. You always, everyone comes in to bail people out. And it could be religious people. It could be parents, it could be relatives, and it could be, it certainly is the government, and they do it all because none of them got the fucking balls to say, no, you suffer, because they don't, how could I put it, they fear having this conversation more than they love the person. That's what it boils down to. They mm. don't want to be un discomforted with having an uncomfortable conversation forcing someone to go straight or to suffer their consequences, uh, then they love them. And that's, that's what it is. That's all. So you, is. you know, how I'm trying to give people the benefit of the doubt today and be positive. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that maybe they started out trying to have those truthful conversations, but they got way too much pushback from these idiots. I have to deal with all the time. They're like, what's wrong with you? You don't well, have then, a heart. <clears throat> tell them to fuck off. Look, let people starve. Let them go hungry. Let them go to the next CPA guy who's going to charge him. I, let, let the world do your work. This is why I don't help any. I've never seen a charity work. I've never. I've only seen it extend mm -hmm. the problem to future generations. That's all I've ever seen it do. And enrich the executives running. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Who get the government grants and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, and plus, I hate lazy people. I fucking hate them. These aren't nice people. Uh, this woman who had t two kids out of wedlock or couldn't keep it together. That's not a nice person. That's a child abuser. Okay. I feel bad for the kids. I don't feel bad for poor people, but most of them. Every once in a while, you find legitimately poor, disabled. I get it. Right. But the vast majority of these people are lazy people who just don't want to work. That's it. You, you'll be amazed how creative they get when they need their fix or when they mm. can have sex or when there's food. Oh, they're amazing when it comes. Then they got a lot of street smarts. But when it comes to applying that for like getting a job or applying for it, no, mm -mm, no. <clears throat> And also not to pile on here, but just seeing the photos, they are very, very clearly drug users. If you look at their pictures, I'm, I'm sure they are, but they got money for drugs. They don't have money for, a, for an interview suit or mm. for rent at a, at a cheap place. I, I don't care for these people. I don't care that they die, Wish it was a different way, but they're not nice people. These aren't good people. These are parasites. So, mm. I mean, that's why I, there's no reason to be nice. And these people don't care about those people either because they say, you know what? Sink or swim because the life you got now is miserable. There are fates worse than death. Um, I'm just reading through it. It's just more information. 
Recently, Hernandez has been more afraid of the strangers passing through the camp than the coronavirus. She woke up to 2 a.m. one night to hear a man trying to open her tent. She screamed and the man fled. But now she's built an intricate alarm system made of empty food cans strung together with clotheslines and hidden with cedar bows. It jingles anybody time approaches at night. What? How, how easier would her life have been if she just majored in accounting and kept her legs shut? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> well, that's too hard. Oh, this life that's is easy. They, oh, you look how much you're avoiding work, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, it really is easy. <laughs> Rig up a security system on my tent. It's a lot easier than, yeah, not majoring in something stupid. These are our mm. homes. We don't want no drama, no drug use, and no two facing criminals out here. On a morning last week, as gentle snow fell outside her tent, Hernandez awoke to a headache and a cough swelling in her throat. Out of caution, she got tested for coronavirus. By a visiting nurse, you're still waiting the results. Could be she's sleeping out in the cold. Yeah, could you be. Think? So there you go. All you kids keep you go. You guys keep enabling them. You liberals all keep enabling them. Um, let me go so, through this. It's like I say, thing. man. Like people who are of that side of the political spectrum, uh, yeah, they never want. They always want to pay the least amount of taxes possible at all levels. All levels. No it's exceptions. doing what feels good now. That's all that matters to them. That's all that matters to them. Uh, after Kilo versus New London, Connecticut, we're all renters. Blue state Bolsheviks outlaw the selling of seeds. Enjoy the decline. Enjoy the second Holdemore. That? <laughs> That's dark. Uh, the uh, Holodomor. Uh, I'm thinking Lord of the Rings. Holodomor was the uh, Stalin purges and starvation. Oh. Um, mm. That killed 20 million or something like that. Not as much as Mao. Mao is the all time reigning champion. Huh. I'm waiting for the millennial audible recording. That'll be coming out soon um, within the next two weeks, I guess. Uh, scrolling down, Mateo Sepul Sepulveda, a 24-year-old college grad with a business degree. I will start, <laughs> start a salary training program that gives me 60K a year, 3.3K in student loans winning. Awesome. Yeah. I'm glad he, I, yeah. hey, he pulled it off with a business degree. It's it's good to see he came from behind. And look at this. That's a, that's a fair salary. Very manageable debt level. Cool. And it looks like looks like he didn't go to the party school. Looks like he went to a sensible community college if he's only got three thousand dollars in student loans. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's nothing. Yeah, that's not that's, that's a, great. That's Mateo. Nothing. That's fantastic. Now watch, Mateo's gonna fall in love. He will oh, fall yeah. in love. Oh, Mateo, Mateo right now afford. is no, no, no. He's he's oh, in a romance oh. right now. Oh, romance. romance. And he's gonna meet this girl and he's, they're gonna fall in love. And she's just going to have a little bit of debt from her master's in social work, helping out the 10 people. And <laughs> it'll only be 85 grand, but Mateo will be in love. Wow. Oh, love. Oh, love. Oh, that's cute. Oh, and then I'll get that another. too good for my little cuddle work. And then, and then five years from now, Asshole Consulting will get an email from Mateo. <laughs> Sheer Mr. Clary. When I was a happy 24-year-old with $60,000 a year and only 3,000 student loans, I fell in love. I know, I know. <laughs> you tried to warn me. Yeah, we tried to help you, brother. Now, three kids later, I don't think two of them are mine. <laughs> mine right. <laughs> what do I do? I'm still paying off my wife's college diploma. And I'm still paying <laughs> co-signed her loans. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife's kids. Oh. <laughs> Not stop Dre for two bucks. Adele is loving equality now. Now I love feminism. Yeah, you hear? Yeah, she got. Yeah, it. I was just gonna say like uh, it's not so fun when the shoe's on the other foot. There, when you know. <laughs> was she ever a feminist though? Hmm? Uh, I can't even remember her as a singer. Let me let me take a look. Adele. What, what happened with Adele? Why is Adele? Her and her is husband are short... getting divorced. Oh, okay. So oh, she's hitting the wall. Movie. Okay. Okay, here you go. This is why Adele is raising her son to be a feminist. Okay. Okay, we're done. Okay, there yeah, we go. We need to know. There you uh, go. Adele and Beyonce, victory for generosity, feminine, and grace. Okay. Uh, Adele's Grammy speech, important for feminists worldwide. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. That's all I needed to know. Never mind. There you go. You mm -hmm. got it, lady. Uh, she's hitting the wall. She's overweight, and she's alone. That's and what I get from that. She'll owe so much alimony to, the, to her soon-to-be ex, and that's why all the feminists are pissed. Oh yeah, I bet. That's I thought they, they wanted equality. 
Yeah. Hmm. yeah not when it comes money. to paying the monies, only receiving kinda like, the monies. Kind of like all of Chad's liberal leftist taxpayers who don't want to pay the taxes, but then vote for the taxes. That, those people. <sighs> yeah. Uh, notice animal kingdom is just fine countryside. Yeah. The animals are doing fine. South Dakota isn't closed either. I think I may take a vacation out there. Can I visit you, Great One, if I come to Colorado, or is that the... Uh, oh, yeah. I can? All right. Oh, yeah. But mugs ain't open, huh? No, coffee shops, restaurants, all that's closed, but the outdoors is open. People are okay. all we'll still go. all over the trails. Good, good. We'll go hike. Bacon oh, yeah. for 223 If you got to say it, you ain't it. Quote of mine. Okay. Mm -hmm. You stole that from me, but it's cool, Bacon. Okay. <laughs> i've been saying that for years uh rona 19 ruined uh from cheap cinema for five bucks rona 19 ruined everything i'm making a t-shirt so done with this bullshit <clears throat> yeah go ahead go to go to red Bull. Uh, actually if you go to zazzle cheap cinema if you do set up go to zazzle instead because cafe press sucks uh yeah so i'm kind of curious if someone has ever used zazzle i've used zazzle not in a long time though is it good I mean, I rem I remember it being okay, but again, I haven't used it in years. Okay. I will I will say this though: uh, Zazzle did censor my Obama stickers. Oh, Vince at Masculine Geeks. That's why he was saying that Cafe Press and Zazzle would not allow that or like guns mm -hmm. or or like so, nudity. Because I mean, you're like you're that. familiar. You know my Obama symbol, the one I did with the kami colors and everything. Right. Yeah. So yeah, Zazzle did censor that. Cafe Press actually did not. Interesting. Okay. But yeah, you know, again, this was years and years and years ago. So this has nothing Guys, to do with today. What if a company was like a Whoa. platform? Wow. And just let people do what they wanted. No, and they they had them sign a diet that they, that the company was not responsible for what they produced. What you think that would be possible if companies just respected the freedom of speech? Do you think that's possible? Not in my world. No. <laughs> well, well, what if some conservative who claims to support free speech started this company? I mean, what if someone actually got off their ass and created the company that did this, and possibly? Made a profit on it. I'm, I'm this close to just like offering a universal financial services and a free speech platform. I mean, I'd need money. I'd need billions to set it up. <clears throat> Where it's like, I don't care. I also don't care if the feds come knocking at my door and say, hey, there's some terrorist money floating around. I'm like, oh, you want the records? Okay. So like, just so you know, or oh, you're a pedophile. You got little pictures of your kids and you're running a ring. Yeah, I'll comply with the FBI. Uh, but like, hey, no, I don't care what people say. You want to say you hate pygmies? Fine. You hate white people? Okay. Did you give me your money? Thank you. Yeah, am I making a profit? <laughs> Great. Did I make money <laughs> off of you and your hate? Yes. Fine. You don't like fat chicks? Go ahead. Use my service. You like fat chicks? Go ahead. Use my service. <laughs> um, uh, scrolling down. Joe Smith. For five bucks, yes, I'm a loser. Yes, I scammed the system. And yes, a liberal BS mindset caused most of it. At least I don't pretend I'm some enlightened lefty anymore. Yeah, that's intellectually honest. That's good for Joe. Mm -hmm. That's honest, Joe. No, that's that's more than most leftists do. They yeah. take this shit to the grave. And then they wonder why their kids don't hang out with them. And they say, you know, you do know that when every all these millennials and everyone else is saying, okay, boomer, that's basically telling all the leftist socialist boomers to fuck off. But the millennials and the Zers don't know that it's their socialist. They don't they haven't put it together yet. They haven't realized that following socialist socialist advice is what got them into this trouble. And then their solution is to elect a socialist boomer. Like, but you see, they weren't doing socialism correct before. Yeah, now right. they just now. haven't done it yeah. right. Right. No. no, you're right about that. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tempest 555 as an agent in a field already getting Coromance pushback girls on the <laughs> apps of Coromance oh god that's I gotta so write bad. I got Coromance Coromance that's my chemical Coromance uh, <laughs> already getting Coromance push pushback girls on the apps for attention but not meeting up putting out due to social distancing oh yeah yes yeah, you know oh, yeah they, oh. they get the attention yeah, and yeah, you know, I I think chicks are loving this because of the so again the social distancing. It's like 
you know, we've all heard about how if you talk to a woman in public without her permission, it's rape and all this stuff. And okay, some of that's exaggerated. Some of it's not. But now they can legitimately, you walk up to a girl and start talking to her in public. You've come within six feet. You violated her social distancing. I mean, I can see the point where you will actually be arrested for doing that now, not because you talk to a girl, but because you violated social distancing. I uh, remember when I went to Muggs and I asked the young lady yes. to watch to watch my seat so I could move my car so I wouldn't get a ticket for parking. And then I came back and what did she do? Great one. She moved away from you. She moved she away from me. <laughs> I mean, it's a bar. It's a it's a coffee it's a store. In, oh, in, uh, it's a coffee Collins. shop here in Fort Collins. I had something interesting, similar. I got a friend request on Facebook, I, you know, and I looked to see if it's like a real person. I accept the friend, cute and girl. I, yeah, it was a cute girl. Oh, but wow. but it was a girl who looked like a regular mm. contributor to Super Chats, uh, mm. and had the same name. Mm. I'm like, oh, this is so and so. I don't even want to mention who it is. Sure. So I. I said, hey, good to see you, so-and-so. Thanks for all the donations. She says, what are you talking about? I didn't give you any donations. I said, don't you say, isn't your name such and such and you give me donations? Like, my name's such and such, but I don't give you donations. I'm like, oh, my God, dude, you have a doppelganger. Huh. I said, I will send you. Uh -oh. a, this is weird, man. Like, it is really weird how much they look alike. And then I would get a friend request from that. I was like, oh, this has to be that person. Very statistically odd. So I sent a screenshot, say, here's that person that looks like you. And she's like, stop texting me. It's like, what? <laughs> what? She friended you. Didn't you send me the Facebook request? Didn't, yeah. I, I, I thought, it, and what? All right, fine. Fine. I, they're, they're insane. I, I, you can't have, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I thought, it's like, wow, look at this. This is pretty interesting. Like, you might have a lost twin sister kind of thing. You can't even have a conversation with them if they're too good looking because they view it all. I guess maybe that's in the past. Every guy is trying to hit on them, and now everything is is uh, <clears throat> an approach. Everything yeah. is is uh, harassment. Uh, it's like, wow, I I really, I, I mean, you can't even converse. And I don't know, great one. I mean, you're out there in the real world talking to these people. I, I'm like. Do you have to worry about this? <laughs> you know, I mean, once again, maybe I'm atypical, but I don't get a lot of this. I mean, and on the on the running trail last couple of days, I've chatted up a couple of girls and, mm. you know, I mean, we didn't like bang out there in the middle of nature or anything, <laughs> no. but none of them were like acting afraid or they didn't move out down or to it's, no, no. I mean, we had some nice, normal conversations. I we chatted and we talked about stuff and had a perfectly pleasant time. And so, again, it's like I personally, I, in none of my encounters, chatting up girls, hitting on girls, opening with girls, I've never gotten like screaming, running away, or anything like that in a long time. I've had it many years ago. You know, I like to famously tell the story of I chatted up this one girl on CSU campus in the middle of the plaza. There's like 200 people right. around us. And she's like, tr <laughs> she was visibly trembling in fear. And I'm like, Jeez. I'm standing here talking to you from like four feet away. I was social distancing before it was even cool. And she looked absolutely terrified. But other than her, and I think that's why she stands out is other than her, I've never really run into this myself personally. Okay. I, I just so I, I get I get interesting responses. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'll never ask anyone to watch my laptop again. No, don't do that again. That was yeah. clearly a prelude to rape. Uh, I <laughs> I'm going to you know, include myself in South Dakota. Uh, that's what Mc Jack the Ripper said to women before he's cut them. I'm going to seclude would you watch my laptop. Oh, is no, that what he said? Like, yeah. Would you watch my laptop? And she's like, sure. And then he'd pull out his razor and slice them up. Right. That's what. Uh, uh, Miguel Angel Casillas for two bucks. Anyone interested in a fishbowl man bicycle? Anyone? <laughs> fishbowl man bicycle. Fishbowl man bicycle. Rich Cooper posted a 52-year-old gal's dating profile, and it was. I saw you, that. You can't handle me. God. Worst, best, blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. Pretty was, demanding. That's like, it's mm -hmm. funny. MXWS for five Canadian bucks. Uh, let's just keep women on one side of the planet, men on the other. 
I'm almost okay with that. That has to work. <laughs> well, one side of the planet would have no electricity or running water, but sure. <laughs> As I, I can't like, guess which side. <laughs> it'll be like North Korea and South Korea. One will have right. ice and the other one. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and not being impeded. Like, yeah, we put a thing on the moon and then we colonized Mars. Then we cured cancer. What did you do? Oh, you all starved. Oh. <laughs> we, we were trying to log on to our Instagram accounts. Oh. Uh, scrolling down. Nonstop Dre for five again. Thanks for attempting to save my generation with reality and truth, despite most not listening to you and call you an ist or an ism. At least I listen. Hey, you know why all it matters that, I, that Dre listens to me? Why his opinion matters more than anyone else's? Because... He's going to take your advice and do no. something with it. Because if you didn't know, he is a six foot four, completely <laughs> jacked, nine inch flaccid penis, black dude who has sex with all the with all the duck girls. He gets the girls. The girls. He, gets he gets all the girls. The girls. Hey, yes. nonstop Dre, how do I get the girls? He, talk to nonstop Dre how to get the girls. I've always wondered how to do that. Well, apparently you got to be Dre. That's <laughs> but hey, Dre, you should write a book, man. How to get the girls? Uh, MFK, AOC, Talib, or Co Omar? I don't know what that is for two bucks. MFK. Oh, marry, fuck, or kill? Oh, marry, fuck. Or None kill. of the above. Yeah. We're not having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, I know which ones I wouldn't. Uh, I uh, I only know who AOC is. I don't even know the other two. Uh, Ilian Omar is our nutjob Somali who uh, the believe. state totally took care of, lived off of the University of Minnesota, and they couldn't rush her into um, public uh, office quick enough to show how not sexist or racist, rather. It just speaks uh, so poorly of your state that she got in there. <laughs> she is such – She's, and I'm not saying this because, again, I don't disagree uh, – I do disagree with it politically. This is not why. She is a lying, evil piece of shit. Who married she a She's a liar, and she's a lazy fuck. Oh, but we got to prove how much we're open-minded uh, about the Somali population. It's like, no. The good news is I think she took Phyllis Kahn's seat, and Phyllis Kahn was like this old, wretched – Karen Boomer. Uh, mm. Joe Smith, what's your opinion on George Collin? I have not watched enough of his comedy to know. I, I did like some of the stuff. Um, I, I like him, but I, I wouldn't say he's a Bill Burr or even a Bill Cosby. Um, huh. uh, on a, well, he's also dead, too. Um, I think that's it. Yep. That's all we got. I uh, We did that. <clears throat> we talked about that. Uh, we talked about that. I'm going to tweet out the Coromance. Coromance. Yeah, Coromance. And then, <laughs> God, that's funny. And and I will I will go down. Although, wasn't it you the great one that got it a Coromance? You were the first one to come up with that, right? No, that was not me. I wish that was me. I thought I'll take credit one. for it if you want I me think, to. Well, we'll play it back, but we'll, this will be the brilliant. Coromance episode. That, so. that is hilarious. I'm All right. That down too. Uh, if you would like to help, oh, I'm sorry, guys. We got to plug your stuff, Chad. Plug your stuff. Uh, well, you can find me. We're technically three days away from tax day, but not this year. Um, my website is elkinscpa.com. If you go on Amazon, you can find a, uh, a series of books that my father and I put out. They're tax guides called the Elkins Conference of Tax Guide. Maybe we'll get Mary Jo on a cover one of these days. One of these days, sure, sure. Yeah. Great one. Tell people where they can find you. You guys can find me at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the interwebs or just type Cynical Libertarian Society into Google or DuckDuckGo. Or if you're a boomer, you can use Bing. I'm also occasionally on Twitter more than I should be. C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C over there on the Twitterverse. And if you go to Amazon.com and look for my books, you will not find any because I haven't written any. Yes. And then just a little bit of warning. When you go to his site, you're going to see swastikas and... Uh, that, hammer and sickles. If that's you look satire. Closely, that is satire. He's <laughs> ripping apart communism and Nazism. He is not for because you have to look at like, whoa, wait, oh, I see what he's doing there. Yeah. So don't let that scare you. I would advise the great one to change that. But I, I have not been running a podcast for how long now? Great 15 one. Fifteen years. 50, how many episodes total you got? Seven hundred, eight hundred. 
Uh, more than that, if I add them up, because stating the obvious is like on 600 something anarchy oh. moments on 200 something. So close to a thousand at this point. Okay, cool, cool. Not as much as Stefan Molyneux, but then I don't have the <laughs> accent either. Right, you don't. You, you know, I did a study and if for British guys, they get like a 500% premium. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, they have a 1300% premium. Now, of course, Molyneux's figures probably skew that data. Women yeah. get a 500% premium. So if you are a non-British accented American schlep, uh, mm -hmm. the Brits could say the exact same thing as you with their wonderfully ugly teeth, and they'll yeah. have 1300 ti 13 times the amount of uh, followers you have. Well, you know the flip side of this, right? No, what? If, if y'all going to spank y'all kids there, um, you know, non-aggression, <laughs> anyone from the <laughs> South, like I, there are studies that show people have Southern accents are not – people – they're not they're the smart. Anti, they're the anti Molyneux, basically. Like oh. it goes down. Yeah. I yeah. disagree with Molyneux. I hmm? and the, I disagree with him completely. I think you need to spank your kids. I I I would have no problems making my kids limp a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. and, the, and I know he's got the studies and the research, but when we go out and we find out that all these social science studies and the psychology studies, especially only a third of them can be repeated, I'm like, yeah, I like to oh, see yeah, start exactly. incorporating. Yeah. I want to see us incorporating data of the millennials now, how, how all the non spank millennials. I want to right. see how well they've turned out. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I have no problems yeah. making little kids limp. Right. Um, now, I, there's a middle ground between like beating your kids with a rubber yeah. hose every day and never spanking them. There's a place in between there. Yeah. Yeah. A good ass whipping once and once and then like, my mother beat my ass probably about three or four times. And that was all it took. Yeah, and you never have to do it again. No, yeah, that's that's what it takes. Three or four good ass whippings, and, and you'll be good. fine. Yep. If I mean, I, or knowledge. as I say, one limping. <laughs> My kids limp for a week. I say, you want to limp some more? You know, okay. <laughs> Non-aggression principle, gentlemen. Andrew Lyon for two bucks. Yes, the great triumvirate is back. Have we ever podcasted before? This is the first time for Austin, me and the great yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, no, this is the yeah. first time I've been on with Chad. Nonstop trade. Hey, nonstop trade. Who, by the way, is a six foot eight, two hundred ninety pound, <laughs> completely checked. Who, who has really? to have? Yeah, you know, uh, like hoses that have that rolling up device on yeah. the side of the house. That's how he's got to roll up his dick. That's how big his Damn, dick is. Damn, oh, that's man. a lot of dick. That's a All lot right. of dick. Fucking so, uh, lays railroad track with it. So, so when he pie. writes his book called How to Get the Girls by Nonstop Dre, you're going to open right. it. It's going to be like a pop-up book. It'll just yeah, have so a big pop-up of right. his big dick. Right. 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 Exactly. <laughs> this you is how it. you get the girls. And it's like, oh, shit. It. All right. Damn. And if you'd like to help out the old Capmeister, you can uh, go to olderbrother.com slash donate. And you can donate on PayPal, uh, which you don't get anything. You can become a patron member. You click on that link and uh, you get access to all the stuff behind the paywall there, which includes a podcast and pinups and some articles. And then uh, the best way to help out is through my Amazon affiliate program where you click on the Amazon. It's all located there, olderbrother.com slash donate. Those three links, PayPal, Patron, and Amazon. And then if you would, go ahead and buy some of my books, predominantly Bachelor Pad Economics, Curse of the High IQ, Worthless, and The Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty. And there's others, but those are the, just the ones I got here that I can remember right now. And that's it. Great one. Will you take us out correctly? Toodles. <laughs>